How's it going everyone, Sephir here, and welcome back to another Tower of Fantasy video. Today I am going to be sharing with you my secrets for Vera, which is going to include a lot of interesting topics. We're talking about dailies, all of the new gotchas, and the must-know information, the TLDR, what's important, and what's going on so far in Vera. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Vera has unlocked a lot of content, including a new story, a new character, a new pet, Mia, following you around, level 72, and a lot of exciting information coming into the game. I'm going to be live streaming on Twitch right now. Yes, right now, and including a lot of different times. I'm going to be just live streaming all the time. I've been live for like 40 something hours at this point. Uh, so just go ahead and stop by the stream, check it out. We're handing out new Tower of Fantasy code and a lot of them at that. Speaking of codes, we also have some new promo codes into the game, which are going to be fantastic. They're gonna give you dark crystals as well as nucleus and special gifts. So I'm gonna pop those up on the screen here. So make sure to type those in and make sure that you are getting your prizes before it's too late. I have no idea how long these last. So go ahead and claim them while they're there. So now let's start talking about the secrets and important things in Vera. There are new dailies and not what you may think. The new dailies are going to come Come from the fun zone activities in Vera. So this is going to be a little bit interesting. At the top we have the Oasis Club, which is the location of the first two fun zone activities. There are six in total. So if you go to these little markers that will appear on my map, but maybe not yours, so you can reference this video and see for yourself where they are. You have to discover them for the first time, but each of them will come with a certain challenge, like this one is listed as a laser corridor, and there's another one up here at the top which is going to be a wings tour where you use some sort of flight mechanism so there's a lot of different challenges but the first two are located up top at the oasis club the next two are located in the mirror floor hall which is in the central uh, area of miroria and the final two are down in the asset management center so you can go ahead and use that to collect your dailies the reason why you want to do these is you are going to get a currency in the game called mira and mira is a very important currency because it's going to be used for the gotcha machines. So you're going to want to go ahead and collect these and we'll talk a little bit about these here in a moment because Mira is going to be an, an important and vital currency that you're going to use inside of Vera. So Mira is the first one. It's going to come from opening password chests and also discovering activities on the map. This is going to be a very important place to be for these item currency because it's going to get you access to gotcha machines that are going to give you powerful matrix and cosmetic items as well as items to upgrade your character in general so that's going to be super important and the next thing we have to talk about is the old vera coin this is also a similar currency that is going to be used within the game you're going to get it from doing dailies sometimes the login bonus if you have the monthly pass as well as using any exploration out in the world so if you pick up any supply pod or any activity like that you're going to get a lot of these old vera coins which is used for a separate gotcha and so we'll go ahead and get into that because these gotcha machines are a core part of vera and fundamentally very important so the thing is that these gotchas are located in different areas. The first area has four of the gotchas, which is all of the cosmetics and all of the matrix related gotchas that you will use the Mira currency on, which is going to be in the reception hall area. As you can see, my friends behind me here, we are standing on the side. I will give you that the most important gotcha, in my opinion, is the Samir gotcha or a gotcha pawn two to use your Mira on because this will give you one of the most powerful matrix in the game. So so if you do not have Samir's or copies of Samir already, you're going to want to aim for that. It's going to be the best place to spend your Mira. After that, there are some other avenues that you can spend it on. There's little cosmetic options for you, but the other one that's really good is going to come from Huma, and Huma is pretty powerful as well, but I think it's secondary to Samir. So you can start wherever you want because there are some really cool cosmetics like this thing that looks like the Rune King from League and a bunch of other really exciting cosmetic items. So you can check 
those out. I will say that the only real strategy here is to follow your heart, but commit to one gacha, because the drop rates for the top items are very low, and if you pull a lot continually on one gacha, you're going to start eliminating the pool of items, which means you're going to reach those good items at some point. So don't hold your breath hoping to get one of the top items early. If it happens, it happens, and that's really good, but make sure you commit all your resources into one gacha, whatever that would be. And again, my recommendation is going to be for Samir. Now that we have those Mira gotchas explained, there are two other gotchas on the map, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the locations of those now. All right, for the location of the first old Veracoin gacha, you're going to need to head to the Mira Floor Hall. You can use the little space taxi here and teleport yourself, and from that direction, you're going to head over here to the side, and you're going to see two of these little gacha machines, and one of them is going to contain the old Veracoins, which you'll see a mount part here. This is part of the new mount, this sort of like flying motorcycle thing. It's kind of cool, but you'll also see a lot of other activities in here, including upgrades and power-ups that are new to the the game so you're going to see a lot of new currencies and a bit of nucleus so this is a nice one to do in my opinion this is the preferred gacha to roll on the other gacha mirrors this it has a mount part as well but it has matrix rolls and a few other things instead of the power-ups to your character but i prefer this one because you're getting things like booster modules 2 as well as space time crystals and advancement module 2 which is going to be very important for advancing your gear towards the future and vera coins are kind of hard to come by it's going to take you a long time time to collect these up so I would definitely pick this one as your chosen gacha and make sure that you invest on that. We'll take a look at the other gacha as well just to see what is inside. The location of the second gacha is going to be over here on the Hazardous Materials Lab. You're going to once again take the taxi, you're going to land at this location, and you're going to immediately go to the right over here. Once you go over to this side, you'll see a little drop down that you're going to go towards, and this is going to be getting you in the location of the next gacha pond. And this one is pretty good, but it's not exactly the best in my opinion, because it locates a, a little bit of a different uh, material list. So we can go ahead and take a look at that and see what's inside but as you can see it's got the matrix and it does have some of the upgrade materials but it doesn't have the main pieces for upgrading your armor pieces it mostly has the potent omnium crystals which is the new upgrade element for the suppressor but you won't be able to access that until you're well past 77,000 combat score so it's going to be quite a while so i would probably choose that one a little bit carefully Hopefully you guys have better luck on the gacha machines than I do. I've been putting a, quite a lot of pools into the Samir gacha and I haven't received anything quite yet. Go ahead and comment down below if you have gotten one of the rare prizes early. I'm definitely interested to see that. The next thing that we have to talk about is going to be the new gear or equipment in the game, and that's going to be the combat engine. Combat engine is a new slot and is the only new equipment piece that we are getting in 2.0 for global, and it's not going to be until like 2.1 for quite a while that we're going to see something else. So I know people were talking about, whoa, what happened to the visor in this other video I watched? None of that stuff's coming out. It's just the combat engine, guys. Uh, so keep note of that. It's going to have powerful attack boost as well as elemental percents if you get your hands on some of the rare varieties and I'll go ahead and show you where a few of those can come at but first I'm going to show you where a starter one you can pick up is going to be inside of the asset management center on this location where my mouse is and I'm pinging there is a little bench and if you touch this little like shining object next to the bench you're going to get a free blue combat engine and this is going to get you started out the gate so that you can upgrade or enhance that which is going to increase your combat score and your power level so hopefully that helps you guys the only way to get combat engines past that is going to come from the commissary shop and you're going to have to save up this brand new currency and there's going to be quite a lot of it so it's going to take you a while to get that or if you get super lucky from one of the new world bosses and that's going to be very important speaking of new world bosses let's go ahead and talk about that and the location of vera that there are two new world bosses on the map. The first one is going to be Magma, who is, uh, in my opinion, Sobek's cousin. He's kind of easy. We thought he was going to be a lot harder, but we just took a lot of raiders out there and we went and clapped him real fast. He does drop the currency to purchase the combat engines, as well as a chance to have a legendary combat engine. So good luck. Hopefully you get something good from there. And the only way that you can do these is by getting the keys from the weekly. So the other boss would be Rudolph. Both of 
these drops have pretty much the same loot table. Well, not pretty much, exactly the same loot table. So whichever one you do is going to be completely up to you. I'm wondering if there's some sort of pity for one or the other, so maybe focusing on one particular boss might not be a bad idea. Uh, but as far as I know, all of that drop is going to be the same. So now that we have that covered, let's talk about those keys and where you're going to get those. So that's going to be from the new weekly activity reward track at the top. And there's quite a few things in here that we need to talk about. So you're going to get the keys, the old boss chip keys, but on the 300th and 600th marker, you're going to get the new boss chips, which is going to be the gold chips that you can use on either Magma or Rudolph. So that's going to be really nice. And including that, there's a bunch of other different rewards in here, which are going to be really good to gather. But the most important thing is going to come from the end, the 900 marker. You're going to get an, a little item called a data repeater, which is going to allow you to lock out one of the stat lines from a piece of gear and eliminate it so that you cannot upgrade into that stat piece of gear. So the way it works is you'll basically lock out a HP or resistance or something like that so that you can guarantee better stats on that item piece. So if you have a particular really good piece of gear, this is going to be a good place to use it on. Next up is going to be the commissary shop where we have the location of quite a few new goods in here. So if you scroll down in the blue crystal ducts section, you can see a addition of a new item, the potent omnium crystal, which is used to upgrade that suppressor past level uh, 8.1 or whatever it is. I think it's like 77,000 CS or something like that. So it's quite a bit in there. So make sure that you can aim towards this eventually, but I don't think you need to do it right now. So you could probably just hold on to your dust and wait at the moment. I know that you need a few of them, but it's gonna be quite a while before you get that. So it's gonna be up to you. If it does have a weekly limit of one, so you can decide to pull on that or not. And then we have a few other sections in here to cover, which is gonna include the introduction of a new area called the Space Time Store. It's gonna allow you to use that gold and purple currency to buy different types of combat engines. So you can upgrade your gear in that direction and then we also have another section in here with a new currency that is going to include the support section with extra items and little banners and avatars that you can collect for the original support points but more importantly we have the introduction of this new type of support points which is the return support points the way you get this is by helping players who maybe stopped playing the game and now are playing the game again so if you're in a party with them you're going to obtain that material i was able to get it by using the new function and joint op so I went over here to the joint operation and there's this little support match in the top left I clicked on that and it paired me up with some people and I was able to get 30 points for a run and I did something like a joint op 6 or something so it was kind of quick so it wasn't too bad but that's gonna be pretty much it for the commissary store so there's quite a few new sections in there some small differences like different gift types you can get for the different uh, locations so make sure to keep note of that with that covered, we're gonna head over to the challenge section where we have a lot of important elements, including the introduction of the new Bygone Phantasm. The way this works is that certain weapons are gonna be powered up by plus two, plus one, plus two, however much star rating, so it's gonna add to the weapon. So if you have a five star copy of a weapon and it gets plus one, you now have a six star copy of that weapon. But if you already had six stars, you're gonna get a 5% damage boost on the weapon for every level past that. So that's a good important addition and in addition to that, we will have new rewards in the Bygone Phantasm. It was supposed to be in the sequential, but it looks like it's not. It's just in the My Rank rewards, so the total overall score of your Bygone and sequential Phantasm ranking. So there has now been Dark Crystals added to the game. So this is going to be really nice. You can get a little bit of a bonus every week, so that's always good to see. In addition to that, we also have some new information on raids. So raids are working different now. You have a global reward count every week. So you can only do three raids per week. I would strongly recommend doing the hero or hard mode of the mid-level control room as we do have access to it at level 70 currently at this point in time. It will give you the new currencies for the combat engines as well as purple upgrade materials for the booster modules. And after that, it's a bit of a waiting game. There are rumors that we could get a level 74 cap on the 22nd and if we do achieve that we will have access to the hero mode for phantasmic zenith so that will be another place that we want to spend our raid attempts so we're going to go ahead and wait for now so the two strategies here is we're going to wait and see 
if we get level 74 cap that means we will spend our next two raid attempts one of them on the hero mode for phantasmic zenith and then we're going to go over to the battle test area which is going to be the new mode with rudolph as a boss level 73 so we're going to do that one for maximum gold dust so that's going to be the strategy if we get level 74 if we do not get level 74, then we will just simply do Zenith and Shattered Realm on normal because that's the only options available to us and no worries, that's gonna be the strategy going forward. Now, with the important challenge information out of the way, let's talk about a few extra goodies that are coming up. In addition to that, we have the new suppressors, which is going to unlock the 8.5 version, but you probably don't have to worry about that for a while, since you need to have 77,000 combat score just to complete the first section of the 7.5. I'm not even there. I don't know anybody that's there, so it's going to be quite some time before we get into that area. But once you do get in there, you'll start using the new potent omnium crystals and eventually some of the other sections so it's going to be quite a while, but that is something that we do see down the line. On top of that, we have the new island respawns, which are listed in the top. So if you go over here to the question mark, you will see that enemies will respawn every Monday at 5 from now on. But it looks like this week they're still continuing on the same track as before. So I did get my boss monsters to spawn on Thursday yesterday. Uh, so make sure to check that one out. Make sure you clean up your island this one last time for the final week. After that, you don't have to worry about those pesky animals and all kinds of stuff because you will be able to claim everything on on Monday so make sure to keep note of that and that's definitely good news for a lot of people I'm happy to not have to worry about that as much Following that, we also have new achievements within the game. New achievements are really good, actually. There are some very powerful achievements, especially in the Crusade section, which will give you a ton of gold dust and upgrade materials, but they come with very, very difficult challenges like getting a strong raid team together. So having a crew, having some good, powerful friends is gonna be very important. You're gonna wanna check these out because there are a lot of goodies, but there's also more simple ones like the collection thing. So you can go ahead and aim towards your achievement points. I have quite a few already and I think we're getting up towards that 4,000 point goal. So that could be the new maximum possible. We'll have to see how it is. But good luck on all of your achievement hunting. Vera has a super fun map to explore. In addition to that, we finally have one last topic to talk about, and that's going to be in the little area where you spend your vitality. You will have access to Dimensional Trial 6, which comes with quite a lot of materials, and I would recommend this. We also have new Stargates on Vera itself, so make sure to check out your Stargates. You could have some high star, very difficult gates, and that would give you a nice chunk of rewards in addition. So that's going to be it for this one, everyone. I appreciate your time and watching this video. Hopefully these various secrets, tips, and tricks have helped you out. If it did help you out in any way, shape, or form, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. And keep in mind that I'm streaming live on Twitch right now. Yes, right at this moment, you can hop over to my Twitch stream and check it out. We have a lot of new codes to give away and tons of fun times ahead of us as we explore the content of Vera. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we will see you in the next one.